All right, good morning everyone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar. We still have a few people um, that are kind of joining in so they can uh, catch back up on the recorded version later. But we'll get started. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying our new uh, Darkroom Booth 2 with the slideshow feature. We've got a lot of future plans to add even more exciting things to it. But uh, I'll kind of go over some of the basics and then also uh, how you can do some of the more advanced techniques. One of the things that we wanted to integrate with Slideshow, since it's an integrated portion of the program and not a separate add-on, is to make it simple so that with uh, very few or uh, very little effort, you could just get a Slideshow on a second monitor to make it uh, simple for everyone. So we feel like we've done that, and I hope everything uh, works out for everybody and that it, it, uh, you find it very useful. To begin with, you'll notice that we did in version, this recent version, change the menuing structure at the top. This was to accommodate people who use their um, touch screens in their photo booths in vertical fashion so that rather than having to scroll over to get to all the menu options, they can just drop down and choose. And so that's, uh, <clears throat> that's the reason for that. Um, but if you go down to the slideshow mode, you'll see basically a very simple screen. You have uh, off, basic, and custom. Uh, we're going to talk just a second about the basic. If you just need a quick slideshow with very little effort, you can just choose basic and then run your booth session like you normally would, and you'll get a single image of your photo booth strip on the screen, the second screen, in uh, about a five-second uh, transition between images. And that's all, just a simple basic slideshow. If you need more than that, then the custom will have a lot more power, and we'll show you that in just a second. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see two buttons. Oh, wow. Just for press. Hello? Um, one of the buttons on the um, right-hand side is Browse. If you click on that button, it will open a folder that shows the uh, the containing folder where all of the slideshow files are contained. And then uh, you can uh, you know, use that on a third monitor, fourth monitor. You can do it on a network and browse with other computers to that slideshow. There's a lot of different options you can do with that. Um, the next thing you'll notice is a preview button. So if you set up your slideshow parameters in the custom section, you can click on the preview to get a view of what that will look at or look like <clears throat> on the uh, the preview. Now keep in mind, if you do that with a new event or an event that you have not run any recent sessions on, you're not going to have any pictures. They're going to be blank because it is designed to use images going forward. So you create an event, run a couple of sessions, and then uh, you know you can do that to see what the slideshow is going to look like. Now. Um, if we go back over here and click on the custom button, then you'll see a drop down with all sorts of options. And I'm going to kind of hit on these options one at a time to give you some idea of what you can do. And then you can play with a lot of different options to get different results. Uh, of course, first at the top, there's a button that says Enable Slideshow. So with just one click, you can turn it off. The section option says Time to Show Each Slide. And the default is three seconds. That is the transition time, or how long that slide is on the screen at once. Now, the next button says Enable Navigation Controls. If you're running the slideshow on a touchscreen, and that touchscreen is on a network, so if you run it on a, a separate, you know, touchscreen somewhere, either a tablet or a third monitor, fourth monitor, not connected to the actual computer, but on a separate uh, computer on a network. You can enable transition controls, and the users can touch the screen, pause the screen, restart the, the slideshow, or they can go backwards and forwards. Now, this could be really handy if you wanted to put, say, some inexpensive tablets on tables around the room or something and run the slideshow over a network so that people could look at the images and if they see one they want to look at again, they could pause it, go backwards, and things like that. So you can enable the navigation controls. Those only show up if you are using them on a separate um, computer or separate monitor, not using the built-in second monitor feature. So that way they don't uh, you know, conflict with anything, but they do allow you to do that from a third monitor or something else connected to the computer. 
The next step down is enable the transition effect. So you set on your transition. Uh, there are a number of transitions, and we also have a little example here of what they are. Slide, dissolve, and slow slide, or slide slow. Uh, we'll see a little bit more about those in just a minute. But you can see the different transition effects when you select it. Like, for instance, the slow slide just gradually slides the photos off to the side like that. Okay? Uh, background music. If you were running this slideshow on a second computer connected to a network, maybe out in the hallway, away from your event, or something like that, you could add a background music image or a background music file there so that that music would play over that television or something if there were speakers available, um, so that that would you know, have some music or something going along with it. Um, that does not play if it's connected directly to the computer if you're playing it on a second monitor. For that, you'd use the regular sound controls built into Darkroom Booth, too. But if you want to have it on a separate computer on a network, you can do that and add background music. Uh, show only the most recent images. Uh, you know, Generally, people, when they get out of the booth, they want to see their image right away. And so those are added to the slideshow at the beginning, the most recent ones, typically when you get in the booth, do a session, get out of the booth within about four or five seconds, that image will appear in the slideshow. But you can also limit how far back it goes. So if you have been doing an event for several hours and you have three, four, five hundred images in there, someone doesn't necessarily want to sit through, <clears throat> uh, you know, five hundred images in a slideshow. So you can set, uh, show only the most recent images and set that number to five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 50, 100, whatever you want to. And then it will just limit the slideshow to those most recent images. Uh, images maximum width and maximum height. Depending on your monitor resolution, whether you're doing full screen or just a, a smaller screen view, um, you may want to change the resolution. The default resolution is 1920 by 1080. That's the maximum resolution of most computer monitors, and that will give you a good quality images, uh, even in full screen on those monitors. But you can adjust that if you like. <coughs> uh, display text. This would be text that you want to display on a second monitor or third monitor or whatever you're doing on a network where you can you know, just type in any text that you might want to display over the top of the slideshow. Uh, for example, you could say, you know, come enjoy the photo booth or any other text that you want to display on there. So that's just a quick place that you can put in some text. Uh, the next option is the background color. You can choose what color you'd like using a color picker. Uh, you can also put in RGB numbers to get an exact color you want. So you can choose the background color on the second monitor or slideshow uh, monitor. You can also choose right here with the background graphic the actual um, image uh, that's going to be behind the slideshow. So if you had a slide, uh, you know, some other uh, image that you wanted to put on the slideshow, and I'm going to choose one here, you can uh, choose a background image. Now the options are fit, stretch, and tile. If you were doing a single image that you wanted to fill the screen, you'd probably want to use fit or stretch. If you're using a smaller image, maybe of a texture or brick wall or something like that, and you'd like it to fill the screen with that, you know, texture, then you can choose the tile and it will just duplicate that image over and over again. The next option, uh, add drop shadows to images. If you're doing a background image or a background color and you want the slideshow going over the top of that to have uh, a background shadow, just a little slight shadow to kind of add interest to it, you can check there to get that. Uh, the next options down there are where to display. This is, gives you some powerful options on what you can do with the slideshow. So, for example, if you only want to do the slideshow on monitors connected over a network, the Android tablet or something, the iPad or something like that, that you wanted to have the slideshow displaying on several you know, other places, then you can just generate the slideshow to disk only and not actually have it display on a second monitor. The next option is display on secondary monitor. That's the default. So if you have a second monitor attached to your local computer, then you can select that option and that will display the slideshow on your you know, second monitor. Uh, if you're using a third monitor, if you have like a laptop with a second touch screen inside the booth and then a third monitor, you can do the generate slideshow to disk only and then open the browse folder, select the slideshow.html 
double click on it and drag it over to that monitor and that will run it on that third monitor. The uh, last option there, display slideshow between booth sessions, attract mode. What this does is if the booth is idle and you only have a single screen on your computer, uh, you can display the slideshow between booth sessions. And so after you know five minutes or so of inactivity when no one is using the booth, it will go to the slideshow and display that on that main screen. And if you check that option, I'll check it right quick, then it also has this drop down that you can add uh, text. So you could have on there touch the screen to exit or whatever you want to do or touch the screen to begin. So then someone touches the screen, it goes out of the attract mode and into the regular slideshow mode. If you wanted to run that as well as on a second monitor, then you can just do this display slideshow between booth sessions, browse to the folder, run it in your browser and drag the browser over to that other monitor and make it full screen. And then you'll have it on both screens. So it's really uh, very powerful and flexible to let you do whatever you want to do. <clears throat> now then, here's where we get into some real power on how you can generate different effects and different slideshows. Um, if you look down here, you'll see where it says display multiple slides together. So if we choose that, then we get a drop down asking you the number of rows and columns. So this lets you design, divide your monitor into uh, you know, different segments rows and columns. In this case, it would be one row and three columns. And then you can have slides move from one to the other or display multiple slides on the screen at the time. If you put two rows, two columns, you'd have four areas. Uh, if you put three and three, you'd have like a tic-tac-toe board of nine areas. And then Darkroom can put in the images into those different quadrants. Uh, the next checkbox down says advance one image at a time. That's a cool option for a variety of things, but it lets, uh, if you have the image, you know, the screen divided into columns and rows, it will allow you to advance the image from one column to the next column. So imagine with me in this scenario, I've got one row, three columns. So my horizontal screen is divided into three pieces. And um, so when the image comes on the screen, it'll go into the first one on the right then it'll move from the first one on the right to the middle one on, in the center of the screen, and then it'll move to the next one on the screen. So it'll just move from one screen to the next. If you uncheck that advance one image at a time, then all three images would move off at the same time and be replaced with three more images. So it depends on what you want, what effect you want. Uh, I'll show you in just a minute that by manipulating the time advance and the advance one image at a time, you can get some really cool effects. Uh, now, if you go down just a little bit further, you'll see uh, the options to what you want to display. So the first two check boxes are original photos. Those are the pictures right out of the camera. You check that. You can also insert a template or add a template. Um, you can add up to three different templates, and this would be handy if you wanted to add a border to those images and have different borders. If you only add one, then they'd all have the same. If you add uh, you know, up to three, then it would rotate among them. This could also be beneficial if you were doing a green screen event and had three different backgrounds. You could have the first background, then the second background, and then the third background. You just create a template with those backgrounds, and Darkroom will rotate through them. Um, and you just choose your template, design it like you would any other print template, and just add it uh, in this fashion here. You click Edit. It pulls up a template list, and you choose the template you want. Okay? Now. Um, if we uh, also move down just a little bit further, you've got show output strips. Now you can check both boxes if you want to show the originals and the output strips. That's the photo strip. The, uh, what you would get if you chose both is you'd get individual, individual, individual strip, individual, individual, individual strip. And so you can mix it up that way. If you uncheck the original photos, then you will only get the output strips. If you obviously check the uh, original photos only and not the output, you just get the original photos. So you really can choose whatever you want to do. So also with the output strips, you could choose a different template. You don't have to have the one that's print. If you don't select that, then you just get the one that's printed. But you can select a different uh, strip template just like you can with the originals. And it can have multiple openings and you can choose you know, one bigger, one smaller, 
however you want to create that template. And you can add up to three templates and it will rotate through those templates. Uh, the next option we have are mix-in folders, and these are very powerful. Uh, you can select a folder on your computer to mix in photos from. So let's say that you have uh, maybe an ad for your company, or if you're a photographer running a photo booth as well, if you've got some pictures of the bride and groom uh, from an engagement session, or maybe a corporate sponsor wants to have their ad periodically come up on the slideshow. So you just create a folder. In this case, I've created one called Add, and um, put an image in there, and folder, you know, select the uh, number of images to insert. So if you had two or three or four, you could have those in there. And then the uh, how often you want it inserted, I've got it set to six, but you can set it every 50th, you know, image comes up as your uh, add or every, you know, 20th image, whatever you wanted to do. You can also add a template to that as well. You can just select your uh, insert the template into. There's a second mix-in folder, so if you wanted to have, let's say, images from the uh, bride and groom's bridal session, I'll close that for a minute, uh, mix-in from the bridal session every maybe 20th photo, and then every 30th photo, a uh, an ad pop-up, you can just put them in separate mix-in folders and set those images so separately. You can also choose a template for that if you'd like to as well. Do that a little further, mix in survey results. So if you're doing a survey, you can choose to mix in survey results, tell how often you'd like that to show up, and then Darkroom can mix in the survey result as well uh, into the, the, uh, the slideshow. Now, if you look down here, you'll see this last option, display an extra group of images. If you select that, it also drops down and gives you a third option as well. So let's just say, for instance, you have your, your screen divided up here. In this case, one row, three columns. You could have pictures of the bride and groom uh, at an engagement session changing in one column, while pictures from the photo booth are in another column, while an ad is displaying in the third column. So you can have those set up that way to where not just mixing in every so many slides, but continuously different things in different quadrants of the screen can be displayed. Okay, um, now that we've got kind of a rundown of all of that, I'm going to go back through and just kind of give you a, um, an overview of how it all looks. Um, change a few things here, and we'll see how this takes a look. Now, I'm going to... Uh, set up to allow you to see both screens on my computer. Hopefully this will work um, so that you can see both screens and preview. Okay, there's my lovely model. Now you'll see in this particular view I've got a background image um, that matches the desktop on my uh, main image. And then I've got the individual photos changing. Now this particular model, <laughs> she doesn't move much and she gets kind of stiff and everything in front of the camera. So all of the images look alike, but each one of those is a different image. You'll see that. Um, the images just change and transition one to the other. So if you look over on the right-hand side where they're coming in, that right-hand image is moving over to the next image, then the next image. So you can change and get different results in different ways. So I'm going to change this just a little bit. Now in this particular transition, it moves over and stops for three seconds and then moves on over. See, there's where it's stopping. All right, now it's going to move on over. Now, if I go back now and change the time to show each slide to zero and then do a preview, you'll see that they don't stop. They just continuously slide across. So making a slight adjustment in the timing causes you to get a completely different output. So if these were all booth images, you'd see, you know, different images in each one of those slots. Okay, uh, let's go down here and choose something a little differently. If I change the display multiple images together, turn that off so that it only shows a single image, then when I do that, you'll see that we get one image full screen sliding back and forth. And so it just slides across that way. Okay.
So by changing just a few little things, you can get a lot of different results. Now I'm going to go back and put this back to multiple slides together. And I've got it set to mix in so you can see the mix in on the, uh, the ad here in just a minute. It'll come up in just a few seconds. All right. Sorry for the pause here, but I want you to see this slide come up. I've got it set to every six, so it should come up here in just a minute. Hoping everyone is seeing my second monitor over there so you can see the actual slide show output. There we go. Now you can see my ad filtering in there periodically. Okay. Now then, um, let's make a couple of more changes so you can see how things look a little differently. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, run a completely new session. So you can see how this looks when uh, in operation. And you'll see my lovely model there. Here you can see on the left-hand side we have our booth operation screen. That's the normal screen with the touch screen that you would have your actual booth operating on. And then over on the right-hand side you'll see that I have uh, created the uh, slideshow background that matches the screen. So now when we start a session, uh, the screen changes. You'll see my lovely model there and uh, pictures are taken as the preview. The next picture is taken. And one more picture is taken. Here it's filtering in my ad because I've got it set every six. You probably want to have that set higher, um, but I have it every six just to uh, illustrate the point. Okay, now the session is over, and in just a couple of seconds, we'll see that session added to the slideshow. And there we go, but I didn't add my green screen background. Sorry about that. I should have added. I could, you can add a green screen background to that so that you see that with the actual background. In fact, let me do that real fast, show you how simple that is to do. Um, just check here, click edit. I have a pre set up border or template. So that we can add that in. I'm going to choose event image at a time. And give me one second to clear out those without the background. All right, we'll go ahead and run another session now that has the background. <laughs> Image one. Thank you to my lovely model. She uh, she doesn't charge much, and she's kind of stiff in front of the camera, but she works cheap and doesn't complain. For those that are wondering, using this green screen with this particular doll, I'm, I'm using just uh, two umbrellas, one on the right, one on the left of the camera with uh, hot lights, just uh, continuous light. Okay, session's over. And here you see my slideshow coming in on the right-hand side. And there's my uh, first 
you know, add. I've got set every sixth image it'll pop up. Then right after that, you'll see my uh, image taken with the background, the green screen background. So there's the model with the green screen background. And if you were, if you had different images, all of this is the same, but if you had different images here, that first image, the second image, and the third image would be different. And they're just, they're scrolling across in just a slow crawl. You could also have that transition to be dissolve or fade or however you wanted to do that, where it would just fade from one to the next. Now, if you only have, you know, in this case, I've got three images. So rather than have blank screen display, Darkroom will continuously display only those three images uh, until more images are added. So as the sessions go on and you add more and more images, then it would add those images in as well. The goal is for people to get out of the booth and look right over at the screen and then just very shortly see their picture come up just in a couple of seconds. And again, every sixth image in this case, I've got the booth ad coming up as well. Okay. Uh, once again, if you look down through here in the slideshow options, you can just mix and match and get different options included in there. Let me change one thing here. I'm going to just change that and um, and show you how it looks if you do that. Okay. Now you can see I've got nine images on the screen that are all changing and, and uh, moving back and forth. Again, I only have three, so in this case, Darkroom is going to duplicate those three images into all the empty quadrants so I don't end up with uh, blank cells in that situation. Now, if you were to come back and change this to, let's say, two, oops, and two, then preview, then I've only got four images on the screen. Does that make sense? Now, if I changed that to one and three, and then turned off the originals, but turned on the output strips. Let's try that. See what we get. I'm just going into the browse folder and deleting the uh, the current slideshow, so I don't get those same images constantly repeating in there. Okay, so let's run another session. There's image one. Here's image two. And of course, now's our image three. All right, that session's over. The images are being processed and added to the slideshow. And then we should see those added here real quickly. All right, there we go. I've got this set. This is a horizontal strip. So you see them crawling across the screen where I've got, you know, just a, uh, one row and three columns. If I had a vertical strip, then they would be up and down and filling that spot and filling the screen more. Now, another thing you can do if you go back to the slideshow, I'm going to change to a different transition. Let's go to dissolve. Okay, and then let's give it about a three second dissolve. All right. So in that particular situation, you'll see that they don't crawl across the screen. They stay static, and then they just fade from one to the other. Now, because they all look the same in this illustration, you don't see very much, but you can see just a brief little dim to black, and then they come back. So you can see them fading and fading like that. So what if we changed that to two and two? Or let's do even more. Let's do, do three rows and one column, okay? So here you have them this way. All right? So what if we changed this back to our zero and we did the slow transition again? 
then you see them sliding off this way, three at a time. So there's a lot of different power and opera uh, options you can do with our slideshow mode. I hope you'll just play around with it. You can just click preview to see what it's going to look like. Oh, uh, let me do one thing real fast just so you can kind of get a, a feel for how this works. If you go in and you select um, the uh, attract mode, and then I click the start booth, you'll see the slideshow is on the main monitor. And then if I click on the screen, then it goes to the main screen. After about five minutes or so of inactivity where no one's using the booth, it'll go back to the attract mode screen. So you can use that to display an ad. You know, you don't have to even have your photo booth images on there. You could go to slideshow and uncheck the output strips and just use a mix in and put um, every one frame. If you did that, then you just get your ad all the time. Or if you did it full screen, you know, like this, then you get your ad full screen. Well, in that case, you probably would not want to have that transition. None. Okay. So then you just have your ad on the screen, and then when you clicked on it, it would go, you go into the full booth mode. Um, then when you click on the screen, it'll go to the main screen to use your booth. So you can do that as well. If you were going to do that and you wanted to have it both on the main screen and on the uh, the screen, you can click Browse. Hope you can see that. And then you would just want to run this slideshow on a, uh, just double click on it, open it in your browser, drag the browser. In fact, I'll just do it real fast. And um, you can drag the browser over to the second monitor like that and then just run it full screen. I did that by pressing F11. That's a full screen mode. So then when you do that, you'll have both the slideshow on a second monitor and on the main screen as a uh, attract mode. In fact, I'll, I'll just do that real quick. Okay, so now we've got slideshow on the main screen and on the, the track screen, but when I click over here, it goes to the main screen. There we go. And you still see the slideshow on the right hand of the second screen. All right. And I can bring that back over here. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar. Um, and if you, uh, you know, have any questions or anything about uh, Slideshow, you can certainly email us at support at darkroomsoftware.com or give us a call. Uh, it's 1-800-517-4522, and uh, we can certainly answer any questions you have. We do have more things planned for Slideshow, and I hope everyone enjoys the use of it. If you have any other questions, let us know. Have a good day.